Hey everyone, Jordan Smith with Voight Smith Innovation. Today I want to introduce to you our 2020 VSI stainless steel batch brine making system. We're really proud of the way this thing turned out and we think you'll be impressed. So starting with the obvious, this giant uh, stainless steel mixing hopper next to me here, this thing holds over 6,000 pounds of salt at once. Using jet agitation, uh, 220 volt single phase electric pump, it'll make over 3,000 gallons an hour of brine. And actually at our facility here, you'll see a tall poly tank behind the brine maker here. That's a float tank. We don't have a high water supply here, so we use a 3,000 gallon water tank. The brine maker draws from that as it's filling its mixing, so we actually get closer to 5,000 gallons an hour out of our facility. Uh, that being said, your mileage may vary, so 3,000 gallons an hour, we feel safe with that number. We feel like anyone can reproduce those results, as long as you have a decent water supply or a float tank. Now behind this mixing tank, which has a 100 inch loading width for salt, we have a 1,050 gallon poly batch tank. So what's happening is, again, our jet agitation is blending the salt and water in our stainless tank. It's overflowing via gravity into that back tank. That's our batch tank. So once that batch tank hits 23.3%, which we'll show you our standard digital salinimeter in a minute, um, we'll pump the batch out and start the next one. So let's go over some of the other features. So while this system is very simple, it's also very powerful and can do many things. Like I mentioned, we have this digital salinity readout, so the days of testing pitchers or vials of, of brine as you're mixing are no longer. This reads your salinity in real time. Um, there's this T with a toroidal sensor uh, plumbed in down here, so as the brine is actively circulating and increasing in salinity, your readout's showing that in real time, so you can literally see it climbing as you're mixing. Um, we have these very simple uh, stickers labeling what each handle does. Some people get overwhelmed by the number of uh, valve handles and what they do. Um, these stickers do a nice job of showing, you know, this is our pump out, this is our agitation, and depending which direction they are, open or closed. Um, down here is a, a really powerful feature of our brine makers, uh, and this is a manifold system. The way the manifold system works is it allows you to bypass the brine maker completely and use the brine making pump to be your central fill station for your trucks. So on this system, we have three separate vertical handles down here, and the way ours is plumbed is one of them is salt brine, one of them is additive for salt brine, and one of them is water. The reason we have the water plumbed in is, like I mentioned earlier, we plumb it into this tank and we can fill from the two inch uh, suction line on the tank, uh, pull the water right into the agitation system of the brine maker, so that allows us to be filling and mixing our brine at the same time, which is what gives us such high production rates. Um, another optional feature, um, all, all these features are standard, but another optional feature you can get with the brine maker is this digital readout. And this digital readout allows you to count the number of gallons that are going in your truck. That way, if you wanna do, say, a, um, like a 90-10 blend, 90% salt brine, 10% additive, uh, you know that in a 1,000 gallon spray unit, you need 900 gallons of brine, 100 gallons additive. That digital readout lets you precisely do that without having to guess. Maintaining this system is very simple. Uh, it's a very low maintenance machine. We've designed it that way so you can spend more time making brine, less time working on your brine making system. Uh, as we mentioned, jet agitation, hardly any moving parts besides manual valve handles and the impeller inside the pump and motor. Uh, as far as maintenance items, the motor does have two grease circs on it, one on the fan side, one on the pump side. Um, follow the manufacturer's recommended intervals on that. For us, we end up greasing it two or three times a year. It doesn't require a whole lot. Uh, beyond that, uh, the system does have a filter basket, which is removable. So when the mixing tank overflows into the back tank, there's a basket, uh, if that gets full of debris, let's say mulch, grass, dirt, leaves, whatever, whatever the case may be, that thing pulls out, you can rinse it out, plop it back in. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I've heard people say these batch systems have a problem where they get undissolvable solids built up and then they don't mix correctly anymore. You gotta wash them out every five, six batches. If that's the case, you're probably using salt with too low a purity. Uh, now, when I say too low a purity, I don't mean the leaves and the sticks and that kind of debris, because that's easy to filter out. What I mean is sand, dirt, and other undissolvable solids that'll build up in the bottom of your mixing hopper, and then instead of your jets pushing against salt to make brine, they're pushing against things that are undissolvable. Now, over time, it's in, uh, inevitable that there's gonna be some buildup in there, and the way you'll know that is because your batch times will increase. It's gonna take longer to mix when there's more contaminants in there. When that does happen, we have this three-inch valve at the bottom of the brine maker, um, a nice big opening, so you can open that up, you can flush water through the system, and you can pump that into a skid steer bucket, or whatever the case may be, put it in the dumpster, or maybe you have some other way to dispose of that. Uh, final maintenance item, really important one, but very simple. You don't wanna leave salt brine in your pump in the off season. 
The reason for that is because the water will evaporate out of the salt brine. There'll be um, salt crystals left behind and they do this weird thing called salt creep where the salt in there will actually creep into the pump seal. It'll get into the electric motor. And when you get back in the fall, the fire up your brine maker, your motor might be seized up. So very simple, flush water through the system, drain the pump, there's a drain plug at the bottom, leave it empty for the off season and you'll be good to go. So now that we've gone over all the features and benefits of the BSI brine making system, let's actually make a batch and show you how easy and fast it actually is. Starting now. Now our brine is finished mixing. Uh, going from mixing to pumping out, it is as simple as switching these two valves. Now it's pumping out to our tanks. So now we've finished pumping out our finished brine. Our entire cycle time was 14 minutes and 16 seconds. We've run quite a few batches through this and that's been a pretty consistent number, right around 15 minutes. That includes filling our water from our float tank, blending the brine into 23.3% brine, and pumping out to our storage tanks. So the entire cycle time for over a thousand gallon batch, under 15 minutes. Pretty impressive production times. Um, this thing is made to keep up with any size liquid operation from you know, obviously small all the way up to enterprise level. Uh, as far as the market goes, one of the fastest production machines on the market. If you wanna get into the best brine plant for the best price, but more importantly, get the best education and knowledge on how to use it and set it up, please give us a call. Boyd Smith Innovation would love to help. Check out our website or give us a call. We're happy to talk to you anytime. Have a great day.